Good evening, everybody. Welcome to our APH at home with APH webinar series. And tonight we're going to be talking about the Mantis in just a few moments. So specifically, we're going to talk about the Mantis and Apple products. We're going to be hearing demonstrations of the Mantis with Mac OS and with iOS. And we'll be starting here in just a moment. On, uh, my name is Paul Ferrara. I am the accessibility Communications Accessibility Editor at APH. And we've got a couple of other guests. Uh, we'll be introducing them in just a moment. We'll give everybody just a few more seconds to wander in and we'll get started. All right, we are ready to get started. Thank you for joining us again for this webinar. Uh, we're gonna be talking about the Mantis with Apple products and we have two other guests to uh, Welcome from Puerto Rico. Welcome. Uh, we're not officially asking where everybody's from, but feel free to add that in the chat if you'd like. Uh, again, my name is Paul Ferrara, and with us tonight, we have Joe Hodge, Quality Assurance from APH, as well as Greg Stilson, Senior Director, Global Innovation. And we appreciate you being here. Also with us tonight is one of our consumers, Katie Frederick from Ohio, who is a professional, who is a brand new Mantis user. Had hers for a couple of weeks. And she's going to be talking to us about some things that she's noticed. Welcome, New Jersey. Welcome, Kentucky. Welcome. We're glad to see so many of you here. And New Mexico, welcome. India. Wonderful. Good to see international flair here as well. Dallas, thanks for coming in. Utah, wonderful. All right. Well, let's get started here. Uh, we're going to start with Greg. He's going to give us some information about the Mantis, just some basic introductory stuff. And uh, whenever you're ready, take it away, Greg. Great. Thanks, Paul. And thanks, everybody, for joining us. Uh, we've uh, be awesome to hear the uh, the global audience that we have today. That's fantastic. So um, I hope everybody's doing well. Uh, I feel like I've spent the whole day on Zoom because I've spent the whole day on Zoom. So <laughs> that's really where we're at here right now. So, um, but thank you all so much for joining. Uh, it's, it's awesome to, uh, to be doing a, an, an evening webinar focused uh, on, on, you know, the professionals and, and what a device like this can, um, can really do for them. So I want to introduce myself a little bit. I'm Greg Silson. I'm recently with the American Printing House for the Blind. Um, really doing a, a first first time uh, role here at APH. Uh, head of Global Innovation is a, a new role at APH. Um, it's really focused on partnerships. It's working on invest, it, advancement of technology with partners uh, to be able to kind of push the bar of what's what's possible with technology to to bridge that accessibility gap, but also to focus on the advancement of education for students who are blind or low vision, and of course to transition to um, to the advancement of professionals as well. So, and that's really where a device like the Mantis, I think, kind of hits both targets. Right? This is a tool that um, that really focuses on advancing the transitional skills for students uh, to make them really, uh, you know, awesome professionals to be skilled when they start working in the field or working in, uh, in, in their various uh, vocations and things like that. So I'm just going to run through a brief, we've only got a few slides here and then we're going to get on with some demonstrations as well. A um, little bit of uh, house housekeeping as well. Um, if you can post your, your questions in the chat, we will pause uh, frequently to, to answer them. Um, and uh, we've got a couple folks monitoring the chat. Uh, if we don't get to your question, as I, I see there's already some questions rolling in, um, please don't be offended. We are, uh, and, and of course, um, please re reach out to cs at uh, aph.org. Uh, if your question does not get answered, we're more than happy to answer any of them that we can. Um, and you can also join the uh, Mantis and Chameleon user group at mantis dash chameleon users at aph.org. And Joe, you can keep me honest if that's not right. <laughs> so um, we'll, uh, we'll, we'll, we'll get the correct address, but I believe it's mantis-chameleon-users at, at tech.aph.org. That's right. Um, 
I'll repeat it. Or I will also put it in the chat just so that people, uh, people see it. Uh, so myself, I've been in, in the assistive technology industry for over 15 years. Um, I previously worked for, uh, for humanware for a, a good majority of my career. Um, working on some of the products that hopefully you, you all are using, things like the Braille Notes, uh, the Victor Reader products, the Trekker Breeze, and eventually the Victor Reader Trek products, uh, and the Brilliant as well. So I'm not a stranger to the AT industry. Um, it's something that I really love um, and really can, I stepped away from the specific education sector for a while, for a couple of years, and really got drawn back into it. Um, education is a, a true passion of mine. So um, so we're going to talk a little bit about uh, what the Mantis is. We'll talk about kind of what it looks like, what it feels like. Um, we'll do some demonstrations with, uh, with Joe focused on Mac OS. Uh, so you'll be able to hear voiceover running. He'll walk through the process there. Um, and then uh, we'll, we'll chat with, um, with Katie about some of her experiences. She's one of the early adopters of the Mantis. And then uh, I'll do some demonstrations with iOS as well. So the Mantis, what does it look like? What does it feel like? Um, the Mantis is a uh, laptop style keyboard. So it's not a full size desktop keyboard. Does not have, for example, does not have the number pad, does not have the six pack of keys. Um, it's very similar to a lot of the more um, traditional laptop keyboards with the function keys plus arrow keys to simulate home and page up, page down, things like that. Um, but the keys are, are full size. So it is not like you're smashing keys together. Um, it's very, very comfortable. And I would say very fast to type on as well. It's uh, become my full-time uh, keyboard. So on the screen right now, for those of you who do have vision, there's a photo of the, the top-down view of the Mantis. So you can see the full-size keyboard along with the 40 cells of Braille and the cursor router keys as well. On the front of the device, you have uh, four thumb keys from left to right. It goes two thumb keys to the left. In the center, there's a circular home button. Uh, and then there's two thumb keys to the right. That home button in the center is used to toggle in and out of what we call local mode. So the, the local mode is um, when you're using the device without having a connection to anything else. So if you're using your iPhone, for example, and you want to switch back and take notes in your editor or something like that, uh, you can do that just by tapping that home button and going back to the internal applications. On the left side of the device, we have a moving from the front to the back, we have a USB host port that can accept uh, a USB thumb drive, things like that. Uh, behind that's the power button to, to tap it once to put it to sleep or wake it up and press and hold to uh, completely shut the device down. Behind that's a USB-C charging port. And then on the very back left corner is the SD card slot taking up to a 64 gigabyte SD card. The device itself has 16 gigs of internal, uh, of internal memory as well. So if you want to st uh, store data, you can do that. Um, and uh, you can store quite a bit considering right now it takes, um, it, you know, you're, you're dealing with a large quantity of text or DAISY text files. So why did we build the Mantis? One of the biggest things that we heard from consumers, from, from students, and from TVIs is that when students are taught to type on a QWERTY keyboard, because they may have started with a eight dot Braille entry keyboard or a refreshable Braille display with eight dot, um, to do most of their work, they were often really resistant to moving to the full size QWERTY keyboard. They were more comfortable originally using that eight dot Braille entry keyboard and uh, were, were resistant to moving to the other things. And what we noticed was that even if the, the student was moving to that QWERTY keyboard, the, even though they possessed a refreshable Braille device that had an eight dot keyboard and that could have connected to that computer, oftentimes that refreshable Braille device just didn't come with when they were starting to learn QWERTY keyboard typing. And so when we started looking at really where the challenge was, it was the fact that there was not a Bluetooth keyboard created that had a embedded Braille display right, right with it. And um, but we, want, we wanted to make sure that the functionality didn't stop there, that it wasn't just to control other devices. There was things that we wanted to make sure that the everyday basic needs were met um, with, with this device. So this device has internal functionality. It has internal applications. It has an editor, a library application, a, science, or a, a calculator, 
a file manager and a clock inside of it. Um, and we wanted to make sure that the basic needs of note taking, book reading, uh, doing a you know a basic calculation and file management were taken care of inside the device without needing to to connect to another tool, right? So, um, but when we looked at the needs of that student or that that um, professional, especially those who are in computer programming and things like that, most of the computer programming that's done today, even uh, you know by blind or low vision people, um, is done on a QWERTY keyboard, right? And so making sure that we possessed enough braille to render that code, um, to render that, that, um, to render that braille on enough braille cells, to render that code on enough braille cells to be productive. Um, so we said, you know, we didn't want to reduce it down any, any less than 40 cells. And the beauty of having 40 cell uh, of braille there is that it fits perfectly in the framework that we have based on a laptop style keyboard. So, So when I, uh, when I mentioned one keyboard to rule them all, uh, that's what this, the title of this slide is. Really, this is the one Bluetooth keyboard that we hope that you take everywhere, right? This is uh, a keyboard that can connect to your Windows machine and connect to JAWS or NVDA and soon Narrator. Um, you can connect to iOS with VoiceOver. You can connect to Mac OS. Um, and and uh, as soon as Google completes their, their end of their, uh, their update to, to Android and Chrome, you'll be able to connect to an Android and a Chrome, uh, Chrome OS device as well. So our goal is to be able to connect to any device possible um, that, that you would need to be able to, to do your work, to, to, to be efficient with whatever tool it is. The beauty of using a device like this with things like iOS or with, with, uh, with Mac OS is that a full-size keyboard on an iOS device allows you to implement a lot of the keyboard shortcuts that Apple allows in, in iOS. So for example, if I'm typing an email and I'll, I'll show this later, um, I'll, I'll, I'll show you this later, but if you're in an email, for example, and you press command shift D, you can send that email. You can do the keyboard shortcut to immediately do that. You don't have to find the send button or do the swipe left or swipe right gesture with your keyboard multiple times until you find the send button. A lot of Apple's internal apps allow for those keyboard shortcuts to be done, making you more efficient when you're using these devices. And then, as I said, you have you have the the internal apps as well. If you're if you're in a, a meeting and you just want to take notes and things like that, um, you will you can take notes right on the device and then bring it back to your other tool later on and make it uh, you know make it make it much more cleaned up and things like that. I I apologize, uh, Sully, if you're tracking the um, if you're tracking the questions, I'm not able to to hear them at the same time. I'm having to to mute. Uh, Jaws, just because um, unlike many of you, I cannot focus on two things at once, uh, which my wife will be very quick to tell you. Um, so I did just hear that somebody asked, is this eliminating the need for a Braille note taker? And the answer, the answer is no. Um, the internal applications are not um, as robust as what you would say, what you would see in th say things like a Polaris or a Braille note touch and things like that. You're not going to be writing professional documents on this, the, on this tool. This tool is designed for, for note taking. Um, you're writing in, in .txt files. Um, so you're not writing in docx files or, or things like that. You're not doing any kind of Microsoft Excel or any of, any of that kind of stuff. And of course, doesn't connect to your Google Drive or your, your Office 365. It's basically your basic pencil and paper um, to take notes. And then the idea is that you'll take those notes and move them to uh, your professional device, whether that's a phone, whether that's an iPad, whether that's a computer or a Mac, whatever you're, you're choosing to do that. So what comes in the box? Um, so you obviously get the Mantis Q40. You get a USB-C charging cable. You get a charging brick um, that does allow for, for faster charging. Um, it can connect with any USB charging brick as well. It just may not charge as fast. It comes with a, a, a TPU protective case, so like a plastic shell case that goes around it. There is an optional executive products leather case that you can get from APH if you want. And then the user guide is on the device. So from the main menu of the device, I can press U, jump right to the user guide and read the DAISY version of that user guide. Uh, to quickly talk about the pricing. So the, the price is uh, $24.95. Um, quota pricing is available if, if your uh, agency or, or school system is quota eligible. Um, but the retail price is $24.95. 
and it is shipping now. I am so happy to say that that it is shipping and it is, uh, I, <laughs> I'm not going to use this uh, incorrectly. It's, it's, it is flying off the shelf. Um, so it, it, we've, we've had one shipment uh, that has gone very quickly. We'll be getting another shipment in at the end of the month. So I'm very excited to see the, the, the buildup and excitement for this, for this product. Uh, to go over the main menu briefly, um, I'm just going to read down the main menu. So you have the editor, which allows you to create documents or open documents. You have the Braille terminal application that allows you to connect to other devices. The library application that allows you to uh, connect to services like Bookshare or NFB Newsline and read books in DAISY format uh, or BRF, whatever your preference is. You have your file manager to uh, ensure that you keep things organized. Your calculator, which is just, a, I would say, a basic four-function calculator, right? You're not, it's not a scientific calculator. You're not doing logarithms on this thing, uh, trigonometry, any of that kind of stuff. Um, it's got a clock, so date and time. You, uh, you have settings. One of the really powerful things that I will say about this device is that um, we've created uh, uh, Braille profiles. And what I like about this is that if you're a multi- if you're a multilingual person, so if you're reading documents, let's say in Spanish and English or um, in, in various languages, what you can do is set up different language profiles to be able to switch. So if I open a Spanish document, for example, I can uh, do the command to toggle profiles and start reading that document in Spanish Braille rather than English. Um, and it is, uh, it's, it's, it's pretty cool. I will say, even if you're somebody who, and you, you of course can toggle between contracted and uncontracted Braille. You can also do that on the fly while reading the, uh, the, the same file. I think I just saw a question. Does it have Portuguese? It has, I can tell you that it does have every Braille table supported by Duxbury, uh, and Lib Louie. So, Portuguese, I believe it has both Brazilian. Um, yeah, it, it, it has both of them, uh, both Portuguese and Portuguese and traditional Portuguese. Um, so like I said, the, the Braille profiles is extremely handy for, for those of you who are multilingual. Um, and, and like I said, as you're, as you're reading, you, you are able to, um, to read directly uh, in contracted or contracted Braille in the same file. So if you're just learning Braille and you come across this uh, contraction that you don't know, you can press the Alt Control G command and it'll switch uh, your grade of Braille into uh, uncontracted Braille and expand that contraction to help you learn it as well. So um, as I said, so that's the settings menu. You have your Wi-Fi connection. So this device does have onboard Wi-Fi. So you can set up your Wi-Fi connection that does support, um, you know, your traditional, uh, I would say, personal Wi-Fi connection. So anything related to uh, authentication portals and things like that, where you're, let's say, in a hotel or in a uh, airport or something like that, because it doesn't have an onboard web browser, we're not able to take you to those authentication portals. But if you're using a connection at home or, you know, a personal connection where you type in a, a WPA code or something like that. Um, it does, it does connect to the internet. And that's also how you can download the, the updates as well. Um, the updates are Wi-Fi delivered, or you can copy a file onto a thumb drive or an SD card as well. Um, in the online services, as I said, you use that Wi-Fi, you use that uh, Wi-Fi connection to connect directly to Bookshare or uh, or to, to NFB Newsline. And that's really powerful because you're able to download books without a connection to any other device uh, directly to the Mantis itself. And you can use the various commands in DAISY to navigate by chapter, by page, by, uh, by heading, and, uh, and jump around in your book as you need. So it's, it's extremely powerful there and being able to do that all without a connection to any other device. Um, it does connect to up to five Bluetooth connections and one host USB connection as well. Um, and, uh, and I think what I'm going to do now as I've finished my spiel is I'm going to switch it over to Joe. Uh, should we, before we well, go to Joe. some questions. Yeah, quick, I was going to say, should we pause? I heard some questions coming Got a few in, questions. So, so what about being able to add other keyboard layouts so you can type in the editor in other languages? It's a great question. So keyboard layouts are going to be coming with uh, a, a coming up update. We're doing an international update. So one of the things that 
in an international um, market, there are other keyboards. There's the AZRD and the Quartz keyboards um, that are used in, in other countries as well. Uh, we're currently finalizing both the hardware of coming of, of, of creating a, those keyboards that have those layouts, but then also adding those the, the software piece of that as well, along with the localizations. So the menus themselves also will need to be localized in those languages as well. So it's not just the keyboard layouts, but it's also a lot of the uh, under the hood localization. That's going to be coming in a, a future 1.1 version that we're hoping uh, will, will come towards the, uh, the end of the summer. Um, we're also working on a version 1.01, um, which we're hoping to release here in the, the coming weeks um, that, that will simplify the Bluetooth pairing process. We also are updating the JAWS driver um, that actually is on the website today. Um, so if you haven't downloaded the new JAWS driver and you're using um, and you, you have a Mantis already, I would encourage you to go to aph.org slash Mantis and download the new uh, JAWS driver um, that was just posted because that makes things a lot more stable with JAWS. Um, we, we heard a few, few folks at, at the or outset of, of releasing the Mantis mentioning that they had disconnection issues and pairing issues and unfortunately um, JAWS does connect to Bluetooth devices a little differently <laughs> and I would say more sporadically than say NVDA or Narrator. Um, so the, uh, the, the driver is updated um, and I, I'm happy to say it does work a lot better. But um, we are releasing a version 1.01 shortly um, which will add new stabilities, uh, simplify some processes as well um, to just make things all a lot more stable. We had another question, and you talked about it a little bit, but can you talk a little bit more about moving stuff from the Mantis to a computer? Yep. So you can do it a couple ways. You can use the removable storage, so the thumb drive or the SD card to just basically copy and paste files. Um, it does read docx files, um, but you, you do not type, you, you're not able to type in, uh, in a docx file. So for example, I'm able to open uh, if, let's say my, my teacher, my coworker gives me a docx file, I can copy it and paste it on my, uh, from my thumb drive or from my SD card to the Mantis, and I can read it in the editor. Um, but if I type in that document, it has to be resaved as a TXT file. And that's, that's having to do with a lot of licensing issues that we're, we're, uh, we're working with in order to keep the pricing low. Um, we are, we're, we're, you know, keeping a, a basic pen and paper type of approach here. So it will, you're able to, to edit some files, but it does resave them as text files. Can somebody use the new driver if they have an older version, version of JAWS, like 2018? You sure can. Absolutely. Yep. That driver is, is actually, it will be in um, the July version of JAWS when, when Freedom Scientific updates JAWS to the July version. Um, but anybody earlier than that can install it right now and, uh, and get access to it. Is there a feature to find text strings in a library or editor apps? There is. Yep. There's find and uh, I believe there's, yeah, find and replace as well. It's like, so you just put the user guide up there. That is the, going to be the best place to find your shortcuts. Mm -hmm. Also a question about updates. If you have a Mantis and you have it connected to Wi-Fi, mm -hmm. uh, it will check for updates for you, but you can also manually check for them as well. Correct. Uh, I think that really covers most of the questions. If we missed any, uh, feel free to chime in, but I think that covers the basic questions. We're going to turn it over to Joe and we'll turn the chat off for a little while because Joe's going to be on a Mac with voiceover and that will disturb him probably with the voiceover on. <laughs> yeah. I like Greg. So, I, I can only focus on one thing at once. You, you all don't want to hear the chat while, while Joe's doing the voiceover thing. <laughs> that, that would be very, very interesting. So <laughs> bear uh, with me one second as I stop your share here. And it's all yours, Joe. All right. I want to say good evening to everybody. Thank you for coming. Uh, I've been listening into the chat. You guys are, are great. Uh, participants so far and uh, hopefully I teach you something and and uh, show the excitement of the Mantis. This is a really nice keyboard. So one thing I want to talk about focused on the keyboard real quick is there are bumps on the F4, F8, and F12 and that's going to come into play here as I start playing with voiceover uh, because I can quickly identify those keys by the bumps on them. If they feel like the F and the J keys so it's just a little raised line that you can you can identify the keys fast. 
So I'm going to go ahead and share my screen and you're going to start hearing voiceover. Um, and okay, awesome. There we go. Zoom.us. Right, so Zoom.us has new. I can hit the control key and that, that stops everything. So what's great about this is I have uh, my Mac connected to my Mantis. So I'm using a MacBook Pro with just this keyboard. So when I hit the home key here, I'm going to be in the main menu that Greg was just talking about. So I'm on editor. Now I'm using USB-C. Uh, we are uh, working with Bluetooth with Apple, but currently uh, it's going to be just Apple has to do some fixing uh, on the Mac side and on the iOS side uh, to get Bluetooth working correctly. So this is not your normal Braille display because it's using a QWERTY keyboard. When I plug this into the Mac, it's a QWERTY keyboard and Braille display. So I can hit Command F5 right now. Uh, well, actually not right now because I'm in the, the main menu. But uh, so I'm going to hit T and go to terminal. I'm going to show you how fast this is to connect. So it says USB connection on my Braille display right now. I'm going to press enter. And now when I hit voice over right arrow, audio sub menu, I am now controlling my Mac. So if I hit command F5, voice over off, and then I hit alt shift A for applications. Voice over on zoom.us, system dialog, unmute button, stop video button, finder, finder, desktop, desktop, empty group, voice over off. Voice over on Finder, Applications, Window, List View. Zoom.us. Joseph, you are no, on mute, buddy. You, you did command shift. Zoom.us. Yourself. Currently unmuted. There we go. All right. See, that's, <laughs> that's Zoom being, being mean right there. All right. <laughs> so I use an a app called RetroArch and do gaming with the keyboard. So what's great about this is, is you can use this as a keyboard or a keyboard and braille display. Finder. Uh, finder. There we go. I'm going to get out of Zoom so we don't have any problems like that again. <laughs> Airfoil sound. All right. So what's, um, I'm going to show you guys. Uh, right now, I'm actually using 8.computer braille because that's how it actually is on VoiceOver when you start the Mac, when you pair it for the first time. I wanted to kind of give you guys that experience. So I'm going to do VoiceOver F8. And again, you can feel the bump on the F8. Opening VoiceOver Utility. And then voice over utility, voice over utility window, utility category. So I'm seeing utility category in Braille. So I'm going to hit command nine to go to Braille settings. Braille, Braille. And then I'm going to press tab. Layout, selected tab, one of three. So we want layout. English, we're system, connected English. We're using USB-C. The Mac automatically finds it and connects to it right away. Eight dot, mode, pop-up button. So now uh, for the table. Mode, one here. system, Sorry. English, unified, table. Pop up button. So we have uh, choose the Braille translation menu check mark system English U system English US to anything that I want system English UK system check mark system English so unify US. press check mode and then eight dot I go over mode. Here to mode menu check mark contracted six dot I can change it press to contracted, contracted six dot, dot contracted or six contracted six dot I'm gonna go ahead and leave it on contracted and I'm gonna hit command Q finder applications window close window desktop empty and now we're we're actually i'm reading it now in gray too so i can hit the voice over d for the doc doc safari mail 4 of 27 actually facetime message cap no app system cr tune in 13 of 27 so just like i would on a normal keyboard finder desktop i'm going to bring up empty application application the braille display is important and how neat that is and i've loved using this to edit documents and write documents and check myself. Uh, AutoCorrect does a good job, but I like being in control. So <laughs> Microsoft Edge DE, uh, Microsoft, Microsoft Teams got app, Microsoft Word dot app, app open right, so selection. Open up Word. Word, open new and recent files, and window, Joseph, account document. settings, menu button, new document, document one, window, page one. So now I'm gonna say, hi, I am having, I am having fun. fun. So on the Braille display, I can actually read this back. Now, one thing, that I am somewhat disappointed with on the Mac still, if you guys are Mac users, uh, is sometimes editing can be a chore. So voiceover gets a little lost, but what's great is we have cursor writing keys on this. So uh, I'm gonna actually make a new line. New line. I'm gonna make a few typing errors just, just New line. So. It looks like basketball will not space this 
year, so put, period. It looks like baseball will not happen this year. However, I really messed up. Print layout, selected radio button, document one, print layout, now, selected. one thing ra- about this is, I'm going to turn a quick, quick nav off. Because that new line, will get us in a bad annotation situation. grammatical error, Hot new line, so it now, looks misspelled. I can actually like baseball read will not back. happen this year, new line. I'm going to stop that. I can read back what I wrote, and I can actually use the cursor routing keys to go here and get rid of the characters. So I got will. a few S's. So I'm going to hit the cursor routing key above the E um, because that actually will, if when I hit backspace, it's going to delete the key character before. So S. I'm going to hit backspace and an S goes away. S. An S goes away. S. And another S goes away. So now I have baseball and I'm reading that on the Braille display. So it makes editing on the Mac actually much more enjoyable. Before I had a Braille display, I was always deleting wrong things and voiceover was sometimes sluggish about telling me what I was actually deleting. Uh, so I've, I've really found my productivity has gone up since getting this. So I'm going to go ahead and close out of quick word Microsoft in dial ch- file I'm format. Show you one more quick thing. Cancel, but save, save, can't don't save button. Finder go applications, Safari. zoom dot you Safari, Safari, Apple Vis vertical. So I'm on Apple Vis cause today was WWDC as well. And I've been <laughs> looking at the news. So, you can actually turn on quick letter navigation. I think I already have it on, but we're going to do voice over Q. Single key quick nav off. Oh, yep. Single key quick nav on. So I can now just hit H and we will actually go down by heading. Heading level two, link, main menu. We're going to do it again. Heading level one, welcome to Apple Vis. And then I can, uh, <laughs> I can explore this page just like any other uh, keyboard and braille display. I can use the cursor routing keys to click on links or etc. cetera. Um, and, and finder applications window list view table microsoft word dot app. i wanted to take a quick note so i can actually be here on the uh i'm going to go to my desktop here close window desktop and uh, i can hit the home key now be on my home t- key twice and be on the main menu so i can go to my editor and i can actually create a document so i can write down something so say i saw something on apple this that i wanted to write down And so I took a quick note that I watched WWDC today and I read that back and now I can go home, hit terminal, USB connection, and I am back on the Mac. So if I hit doc, voice over D, 30. we're over there. Fine. One other thing doc. I want to show you is let's say I'm actually doing something uh, on, the, on the Mac, but I get an iOS alert. So we're going to pretend like I got a text. My phone's on do not disturb, but we're going to pretend like I got a text message alert here. So I'm going to hit the iPhone. 8.33 PM. And 11 I'm to, notification. Now I'm going to hit the home button on the Mantis and go to Bluetooth and iPhone. And Monday. Now. Do, do not disturb. I'm controlling my iPad or my iPhone actually here. Um, so the great thing is, is that I can quickly get back and forth. So I was on the iPhone. Doc. Now I'm back on the Mac. It's as simple as that. The other Finder, great thing. Desktop. Desktop. I'm gonna empty group. Lock the iPhone real quick. And now um, I just want to check in on the iPhone. So I'm going to go to my Bluetooth connections, go to iPhone, and then I'm going to tap a key. 8.33 p.m. And you 11 the, notifications. You hear the time and the, 834 and p- the iPhone wake up. And I can actually just start typing in my passcode. Uh, I got to turn quick now, but there we go. Uh, but I can start typing in my passcode and then inter- start interacting with the phone. So it really increases productivity. Um, as I stated, I've been at APH for three years. Before that, I used to work in a call center and I had a braille display sitting next to my keyboard. And I would always be bumping the braille display and always be moving the braille display. And the fact is to be able just to go uh, to be typing on a normal keyboard and then move my fingers down naturally and look at the Braille display has been amazing. I would, I don't want to do that job again, but if I had to, I would love to have the Mantis. Um, Zoom. US. Zoom. So with this, US I'm going to stop dialogue. sharing here button. and we can turn back on chat. So if you guys have any questions, um, but what I want to, what I want to uh, introduce is Katie. She's a professional who's been using the Mantis off and on, uh, this for the, like the last two weeks. And I want to kind of get her opinion as being a professional uh, from Ohio on how she's liking the Mantis. Uh, Katie, welcome. Welcome in. Great. Thanks. Thanks, Joe. And thanks everyone for having me. It's great to be here tonight. 
Katie, what are your thoughts of the Mantis so far from having it? I think you've had it for like two weeks. Um, what are your thoughts on using it in your daily life and at work? So I, I honestly love the Mantis. Um, I have to say when I first heard about it back in, I think, February or March, I was really excited because, you know, I use Braille every day at work and I'm a, I'm a Braille reader and I have I've used, you know, Braille displays. I have other Braille displays with the more traditional Perkins style keyboards that I'm, you know, efficient on and productive with. But when I heard about the Mantis, I was very intrigued because as much as I, you know, am a professional, so much of my work is done on a computer. And so I was really intrigued to be able to have that device that kind of had the best of both worlds, right? You have a, a laptop style keyboard and a braille display kind of you know all in one unit that you can take with you and so uh, I was I found out about it and kind of you know really watched and, and tried to get my hands on one as soon as I could so um, I was I was successful so I'm I'm very thrilled the 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 keyboard is great as as I think Joe and Greg have said it's it's very comfortable to type on I I don't think I've used another keyboard since I've got my Mantis, honestly. Um, it, it really is a great typing experience. And I think it's, you know, the keys are comfortably spaced. You, you can type fast on it, um, barring a few quirks in iOS. Um, <laughs> and, and, you know, that's just something I think we've all seen with other Braille displays that we've used with, with iOS. Sometimes you get a little, you know, uh, focus issues and things, but it's a it's a great device and the the keyboard's great the the switching between devices is fantastic um being able to you know w be working diligently away on the work computer and then just casually see that i have a text on my iphone perhaps and take a quick break and check that is is really handy so um, i'm i'm very happy with the device so, so one other quick question i know greg and i really haven't talked about, and I think you would be a great person to answer this, is how do you feel about the portability of the device? Because, you know, a, a lot of people might be hearing it's got a braille display, it's a QWERTY keyboard. They, they may sure. not really be getting an idea of the weight. Yeah, so I was actually thinking about this um, earlier. And so I have, um, it's, it's, you know, I'm, I'm actually, you know, holding it in my hand. It's, it's not heavy, basically. Um, it's, you know, it's a, it's a nice sturdy device. Um, it's, it's, you know, well-constructed. Um, I don't know. I would say it, it maybe weighs a pound. I'm not even sure. Maybe not. I don't, I'm not good at that kind of thing, but it's, it's really not, you know, it's, it's about, I have my, my iPad in front of me and I would say, you know, again, it's because of its form factor. It's a, it's very similar to the, the size of my iPad. So it's, uh, if that gives you kind of an idea of its size and its form factor, it's, it's very portable and I think it will, it will certainly travel with me when or if we travel again. <laughs> um, you know, right now I'm working from home though. I have to say it, you know, it is great to, to be able to have that one device where I can have that on my lap and not have to worry about doing some sort of crazy contortion thing where I'd have to, you know, reach over the, for the bro display and things like that. So it's great to, to have a nice portable device on my lap all day. Great. Well, thanks for sharing your experience with us um, tonight, Katie. I appreciate it. Absolutely. And Sully, can you go ahead and open up the chat? And I'm going to turn it over to Greg, and he's going to walk through some iOS. Awesome. So the chat The chat is open if you guys wanted to take a couple of questions, or do you want to hold off, Greg, and take questions at the end? Uh, you know what, why don't I, why don't we hold off? Cause I'm going to actually take back what Joe said and have you turn the chat back off because Done. I'm going to be sharing my screen. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry. Uh, no worries. Uh, Katie, I don't know if you're like me, but I would say working from home with the Mantis had made me a lazier person. And the reason I say that is because normally mm -hmm. I would lean forward to type on my laptop, but now with this thing on my lap, I'm just like sitting lounging back in my work oh, chair. Oh yeah. Like, yeah. It's pretty <laughs> nice. It, I gotta say. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Absolutely. Yeah. yeah. So, well, thanks. Thanks, guys. And uh, I want to, as Joe was muted, uh, thanks to some Zoom antics there. Um, as soon as it, it was funny, because I was muted at the time. And as soon as he said he's going to press Command Shift A, I was like, oh, no, this is not going to end well. <laughs> um, 
So what you, what you didn't hear him say was that when he did press Command Shift A to open the, um, the applications folder of his Mac, the reason he's able to do that is because we connect the Mantis as an HID device, human interface device. And it is a, it's really powerful, especially as a screen reader user, as often as we have to restart screen readers because XYZ fails or doesn't work or there's a, a glitch and you have to reset your screen reader, um, it's nice that you don't have to go to a different keyboard to do that. So for example, on JAWS, if JAWS crashes or if voiceover were to not function correctly and mm -hmm. your focus wasn't right, you can just turn that off using the keyboard and then start it back up using the same keyboard. You don't have to switch, switch devices at all um, because it is being recognized as a full human interface device. And so um, I will say that is, that is something I've enjoyed. Um, especially going from a, a traditional braille display, if you will, um, which uses the screen reader to drive it. Um, this does still use some aspects of the screen reader to provide braille, but uh, in, in many respects, even if you don't have braille at your fingertips, it's still controlling your computer, if that makes sense. What I'm gonna do now is share my screen. I'm gonna share my iPhone screen, um, and we will get this show on the road. All right, share computer sound. You'd think that after doing this 100 times in quarantine, I would be much faster at it, but I am not. All right, so what we're gonna do is we're gonna share my iPhone screen. I'm gonna go to AirPlay and share to Zoom. All right, now. Select it. All right. And Selected. Paul, Joe, Zoom, you guys Zoom, are hearing local voiceover. Gotcha. gotcha. Hear it. Beautiful. Yep. Love it. All right, cool. So we are on my home screen. Doc, messages. Okay. And what I'm going to do, I am not paired with right, right now with, uh, with my Mantis. So what I'm going to do, those of you who do have vision, my Mantis is shown. And um, uh, Jim, I don't know if you want to, no, actually, I don't want you to spotlight it. Never mind. Uh, there's a small window in the top right corner that has my Mantis window there. If you double click on it, if you do a vision, um, you can see the Mantis in a much larger window. Um, also, my very white hands on top of it as well. Uh, so if, I, if I'm at the main menu here, I see editor. As Joe said before, you can hit T for terminal. I'm going to press enter. I'm going to arrow down to add Bluetooth device, and I'm going to press enter. And what that does at this point is it's put Mantis in discovery mode, meaning that now devices can see it. So I'm going to go into my iOS settings. 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 Greg Stilson. And at this point, normally you would go into settings, accessibility, voiceover, braille, but not with the Mantis. The Mantis, because it's connecting as a keyboard, you just go to Bluetooth. What? Bluetooth. Bluetooth. I'm going to now go to the bottom Greg's of the app, list, rows one to and I should see F Mantis Q46. There's my Mantis Q40. It's got the serial number there, and if I double tap, F Mantis Q46. My devices. And now it's paired at that point. That's how simple it is. Um, it now on my Braille display says iPhone connected. And if I and put me back at the terminal menu, I see add Bluetooth device. If I go to Bluetooth connections, I just press the far left thumb key once, or I could have pressed the up arrow, up arrow or B. There's more than one way to skin a cat here. I uh, can activate Bluetooth devices. I see my laptop, which I've already paired with. Uh, and now if I press the down arrow, I see iPhone. And if I activate that, I am now able to use the thumb keys. F Mantis Q4, my devices, now discoverable as iPhone. I am now able to control the device. Um, what's cool about when you connect, I don't know if Joe, Joe mentioned this, when you connect to Apple devices, the, um, normally the buttons to the left of the space bar on a Windows keyboard are Control, Function, Windows, Alt. When you connect to an Apple device, they change to Control, Function, uh, Option, Command. So we do take on the Apple layout. And we try to customize that as much as we can. We uh, are not able to reverse the control and function keys. Um, but I will say that I did adapt to that pretty well. In addition, I also, rather than using the control option um, modifier for my voiceover, I actually use the insert, or sorry, the caps lock modifier. So in this case, I'm going to press caps lock H. Setting. And I'm now back at my home screen. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to go send my friend Joe an email here. So I'm going to press uh, 
doc, Twitter. Uh, command, sorry, control option, function right arrow. So the function right arrow is your end. So if I press command option end, go to voiceover end, it will go to the end. I'm on Twitter. If I go to mail. Mail, two unread like emails. That. And I'm mail. in an active Two. mail. Text field. And I'm going to email Joe. CC slap. I'm still send it to... Subject. T message body. Subject. Subject. Text field. Insertion point at end. We. We. Are. Are. Not. Not. Going. Going. To. To. See baseball. See. Baseball. Notify me. But message uh, body. I'm now pressing Text the far field. right thumb key to emulate the swipe right gesture. I'm going to activate the email. Insertion point at end. I'm, I'm, I'm in the thing. Hi, Joe. Hi, Joe. And do, do you, you think think we we will will see see baseball baseball this this year question mark year and unfortunately I think the answer is a resounding no. Um, at this point, what I was saying before is normally if I was going to use the touch screen, I would find the top right corner or I would swipe left a whole bunch of times two, two, and subject. I would find the we are not sent we are not going to see big can't we are not sent there's button. the send button right but that took Message a whole bunch of keystrokes button. right at Text that point field. I know that on Mac and on iOS the keyboard shortcut to send this email to Joe is just command shift D and it's gone F doc mail that point, two unread emails it just sent the email Joe's got his email in the inbox and he can respond with his opinion of whether we're going to see baseball. Um, at the same point, you can use a lot of those shortcuts um, in, in, uh, in other Apple, um, Apple apps as well. So if you want to create a new message, you can press command N in the messages app and type in the person's name. If you want to create a new note in the notes app, you can press command N. So there's a lot of new, uh, I would say since the, the iPads sort of expansion into that crossover between a computer and a tablet. Um, the nice thing is that iOS also got all those shortcuts. Hey, Greg. Oh, yeah, Joe. Can I give a tip? Uh, if yeah. they hold command for about five seconds, Apple will mm -hmm. actually display a list of shortcuts yeah. on the uh, screen for you for your keyboard. Yeah. Awesome. Very, very cool. That's uh, even something that I didn't know there. So that's fantastic. Um, so at this point, the other thing that I wanted to show is where, if you're not familiar, where to uh, where to access oh. the um, the braille tables and things like that. So the 61. easiest way to do it is battery to talk to Siri, open VoiceOver settings, and it's now opening my VoiceOver settings. Return to Siri. Return to. Settings. Voice. Uh, voice over. Right voice over. Key voice over. Tap. One, double right tap to, on the to go home. To use the. To use. Voice over. Prep. Speaking. Down to speak, braille. Speech. Verbosity. Braille. Afmantis Q4. Output. Contracted. Right now button. it says output is contracted. And for some reason I think we've lost my uh, my audio, but input is set to also contracted. Um, in the past, you used to need to access uh, uncontracted Braille with Mantis. It looks like in iOS, I'm running 13.6 beta. It looks like Apple has uh, improved that. I no longer need to use the uncontracted 8.braille input. So if you're not running 13.6 beta um, and you have a Mantis, you may need to switch that input to uncontracted 8.braille. You do see much better um, responses there, but it looks like we did send a, a Mantis to Apple. They do have some um, HID Braille bugs that they need to work out. We are, um, I'm happy to say, the first HID Braille device like this uh, ever to, to work on an iOS platform. So, um, so we are excited to work with them to, to work out the bugs that they have there. So um, I think at this point, that's that's about as much as I have to say about about um, about iOS and, and the Mantis, it does work extremely efficiently. And as Joe said, that switching between uh, the the iPhone and other devices is as simple as just pressing the home button once, going to uh, Bluetooth, and at that point, 
selecting the device that you want to connect to. So in my case, I see my, uh, my laptop right there and I can connect to it as well. One thing just to mention, um, I have seen on, on the Mantis and Chameleon list, uh, there's some folks that have mentioned that they sometimes lose the connection to their iPhone. And that's one of those um, bugs that Apple needs to work out and they've already mentioned that they're working on. We did put a workaround in if you are not able to connect to a device, um, if you go to back into the terminal menu, you go into Bluetooth, you'll see, for example, I see my iPhone, I see my laptop, but at the end of the list of devices, there's an option there that says reconnect devices. And if I activate that, and we'll see if it, uh, you can hear it, um, it's now saying disconnecting Bluetooth. I just got the tone that sounded like it disconnected. And now uh, what it's gonna do, it says activating device. And you should, I'm gonna go back to Bluetooth click on iPhone and we should get it to reconnect at this point when there it goes. Yep. So hitting reconnect device. If you, if you notice that for whatever reason, your device is not waking up. Um, Rail screen input contracted. You are input. able to contracted uh, button to at this point reconnect just by activating that reconnect button. And it basically forces the uh, rather than you needing to go into settings, Bluetooth, uh, forget device and then repair it this basically does that all for you very simply right, right from the Mantis. So, um, and we, uh, we expect that in hope, hopefully before iOS 14, but um, if, if not by iOS 14, Apple will have uh, fixed these, these bugs there. I'm going to go ahead and stop share. Media controls to movement. Hold this. And Sully, open up the chat, make the chat open for business. <laughs> chat is open for business. <laughs> <laughs> There's one question that um, came in earlier and I neglected to mention it. Can you use the Braille input on the Mantis when it's controlling other devices? It's a great question. You cannot. And the reason being is because the devices are what, what, what's actually controlling the input with the screen reader is the screen reader, right? So we, when we connect to the computer, we connect as a full fledged, uh, QWERTY keyboard, and that's what the, the screen reader sees. Um, if the screen reader supported QWERTY keyboard uh, six dot entry, then you could do that. But not all the screen. I, I don't. I don't think any of the screen readers do allow for the JK, um, JKL, and SDF input. Um, there is six key entry in the editor. So if you are taking notes or uh, if you're you know typing in a calculation in the calculator, you can do that with the six key entry. I have just put the link to the Mantis page on here and I've done that for a couple of reasons. I want everybody to be able to go there and access it. But also there was a question about the manual and the manual is internally in the Mantis, but it's also available on the, on that page as well. I want to clar clarify something Joe mentioned. Um, you know, we, we talked about those bugs that Apple's working on. Um, so as Joe said, he was using it with the Mac with USB. It does work beautifully with USB. Um, when you connect Bluetooth to the Mac, um, it works great if you're using uncont uncontracted Braille. Um, it's when you switch over to contracted mm -hmm. Braille that Apple doesn't recognize the the device correctly. And that's where you see some really erratic behavior because we're typing in uh, essentially single letter inputs all the time. So you'll see things like S become so and F become from and stuff like that. Um, as I said, the, there's, there's pluses and minuses to being the first device ever to do this with mainstream tools. And so we're, we're going along the learning curve right along with them. So, um, but right now it does work beautifully with USB and we expect that it's going to be working, uh, working well with Bluetooth very soon. Can you use the Mantis without voiceover? Uh, yes. You can. Yeah, you can use it uh, as Joe was showing. He was when he shut Voiceover off. What did you do, Joe? You you opened up the apps menu. So you can actually hit command. Yeah. So you can hit command F five, or just like you can to turn it on and off to toggle Voiceover, and you can use it as a normal keyboard. Now the other thing you can do is you can actually mute the speech of Voiceover. So if you just wanted to use the Braille display, uh, you can do that as well. So you can do that. Still have your Braille shut the speech up if you want. Mm -hmm. Yeah, you or can do that with JAWS as well. If you're I mean, someone who is uh, deafblind, then you would be able to do that as well and have all those functions and not have to worry about the speech. Correct. Mm -hmm. And I know that it's not a, a, 
you know, probably a primary use case, but one of the, the cool things is that if you are working alongside a sighted person and you're working on something and, and they're, they need to fill something in, oftentimes one of the things we're doing is you, you're, you're working on something together and they, they need to fill in their password, right? Well, what's the thing you typically do? You step aside from the keyboard, let them type in their password, and then you go back. When you turn off the screen reader here, you can hand them the, the, the keyboard and they can use the same keyboard you were just using. So that's, that's something that is very specific to the Mantis. Um, there's, uh, I don't think there's any other braille display out there that, that does work without a screen reader. Another question about Chromebook. I assume that that's coming. That is coming. Yep. It's, uh, I'm, I'm very happy to say that when we release this, all of the balls are, are out of our court, <laughs> if you want to say it that way. Um, we, being the first device to do this, um, does require some changes on the mainstream uh, providers, right? So, uh, for example, Google uses uh, BRLTTY for their Braille support um, for Chrome OS and for for Android, and so some changes needed to be implemented in BRLTTY, the, the library that they use. Um, the cool thing is that I believe for any, um, any more techie folks, Linux also uses BRLTTY. So once it's updated in that, it should also work on Linux. Can you repeat the key orders moving out from the space bar? Yeah, so from left to right on the left side of the space bar when connected to Windows, it's Control, Function, Windows, Alt. And when you're connected to an Apple device, it's Control, Function, Option, Command. So the only difference is that uh, normally on a, uh, on, a, on a Mac, for example, the Function key is the far left. Um, but like I said, I think it, Joe, you even mentioned to me how quickly you adapted to it uh, being an Apple user. It, yeah, as long, as long as the option and as long as the option and command keys weren't reversed, that would be the, the part that would mess me up. The other thing to mention is on the right hand side, it's not the full. Uh, you don't have the control on that side, so you have command and option, or you have alt and control on the window side. So. Isn't it? Yep. Is it? Yeah. You're right. Yep. And if you want to do the applications key, for example, some people may be saying, oh, this doesn't have an applications key. You're right. It's just like a lot of other laptops where you press function plus the right control key to do the applications key. And that is very handy because on my Mac, on Windows, the function key is actually the F10 or whatever. It's in the touch bar. So it becomes a real pain. So I've loved having the Mantis and boot camp on the Mac uh, to be able to control Windows. Here's a question. I'm not sure what's being asked here. Can you repeat how to something the commands on Apple? Sorry, I'm not sure what 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 exactly you're asking. I think she's referring to the keyboard command on iOS that I was talking with Greg. That little tip: uh, if you hold down the command key uh, for about five seconds in any window that you're in, that will bring up a list of shortcuts. I think I, I heard that one come in. I think that's what they're asking. And then there's a question also about the possibility of implementing one-handed mode and sticky keys. Uh, it's a great question. We're, we're looking into sticky keys uh, being supported. One-handed mode is uh, something that we are looking on our 8-dot device, the Chameleon, um, and we're, we're going to see how, how we can implement that on the Mantis as well. How about the manual, Greg? Is the manual on the device? It is, yep. If you go to the main menu and just hit U for user guide, it'll jump you right there. And it's in DAISY format as well. So you can jump by chapter, by subheading, uh, jump to whatever section you need to. And of course, on the website, if you want to, if you're looking at the Mantis page, you can also check it out there. Quick start guides there, the manuals there, the JAWS drivers are there. As well. And the FAQs as well. If you've got some questions, um, that that FAQ list is being updated frequently, so you uh, you're you're going to see changes to it probably in the coming weeks as well. So there's a question about um, what the device is made of, and then maybe Greg, do you want to talk a little bit about Tier One and Tier Two support? Sure. Uh, so the device is uh, it's a rugged plastic, I would say. Um, Katie, would you agree? <laughs> I would, yes. It's it is a very it's sturdy though. It's it's feel it's very well made. It's very durable. It's it's a good material. Um, it's it's has nice rounded corners. 
Um, it's, it has a nice design and it also, I don't know if we mentioned this earlier, but it does charge with a USB-C cable. Yep, exactly. Yep. Katie, how about the quality of the Braille, the Braille cells? Oh yes, of course. The Braille is awesome. It's, it's the, the, you know, the piezo cells and it's, you know, nice, nice, quiet Braille. Um, very easy to read, very, very good Braille. And it's, it's a pleasure to read. I think I've read more Braille in the past couple of weeks than I, than I have again in a while. And it's just nice to be able to, you know, as, as Greg highlighted, especially in that professional setting where you're, you know, working with a computer all day and you're just, you know, you have those JAWS commands or those whatever commands just in your mind, you know, from years of using them. So just the fact of being able to turn off the screen reader or, you know, mute speech for a while if, if you're tired of dolls yammering on sometimes, um, it's, mm -hmm. it's just nice to be able to, to do that with, with one device. So a lot of benefits. The battery should last uh, about 15 hours uh, is what, what we expect you to get. Um, and like I said, if for those of you who do have the device and if you want to connect it to your home Wi-Fi, you will be notified when that 1.01 version comes out. It'll ask you if you want to install it at that point. Um, one of my personal, I would say, blind guy geeky excitements is the way it updates. Uh, so after you accept the update and say that it's going to install, it restarts the device and then it uses the braille display as a progress bar, which I thought was pretty cool. Uh, so as it's progressing, you see the braille display basically fill up uh, and can get raised up. And I, I thought that was kind of cool. So um, just a fun fact about the way that it updates. Uh, there's two questions I wanted to kind of touch on real quick. Um, so Roberto, you, you mentioned using voiceover in the space bar on iOS. Uh, that is a known issue. One way to get around that is to turn the modifier to the caps lock key. Uh, we are working on that. And then the second question was, is the battery replaceable? And that answer is yes as well. Mm -hmm. Yep. And, uh, and if, you, if you, for whatever reason, don't want to use that, you can use the cursor router keys as, um, as your voiceover activation in most, most contexts. But like I said, that it, I, I just turned the, the caps lock key as the modifier. That's what's really- You could do that. I actually, because I've been doing the whole- switching back and forth and I, I forgot that you can change the modifier key now on voiceover so I'm going to go do that after this meeting <laughs> <Gotcha>. <laughs> make it easier on myself yeah that's what's great about these devices is I, yeah. I think Katie Greg Paul anyone who's used this would agree is that there's more than one way to to do something yes. and and that's what I, I love the versatility of it yes uh, the cursor routing keys have been have been things to be able to do things and just to be able to use them to get a lot of things accomplished as well has been great. But um, yeah. unfortunately, time flies and it really is time for us to wrap it up. I uh, appreciate all of you for coming out, all the great questions. Thank you to Katie and Joe and Greg, of course. Sully, thanks for monitoring the chat with us as well. Thank you and, all very much. Um, we've, um, we've enjoyed and, it. And if you, do, uh, if you do have other questions, if you're interested in purchasing or, or curious about anything, Email our customer service team at cs uh, at aph.org and your questions will get routed to the appropriate person. We are the tier one support of this product. This is an APH product. Um, we made it in partnership with Humanware. That's one of the things you're going to see from APH a lot is partnering with uh, the, the, the assistive technology companies, mainstream companies as we've done with other products like CodeJumper and Microsoft to really up our game with the advancements of, of products by APH. Um, we are extremely passionate about providing top-notch products that are gonna expand and, and really increase the productivity of both blind students, blind and low vision students, along with the professionals as well. So um, we look forward to hearing how you're using the Mantis, how it's, it's working for you, and, um, and please don't hesitate to reach out. Well, you guys are nothing but a bunch of professionals. That's what I got to say. Nice job, everybody. Thanks, mm. Elise. Thanks, man. Yeah. Um, what did we end up with? Uh, we got uh, a little bit north of 70 Yeah, I saw 75 guys. at one point. Yeah. That's pretty good for 89 registered on a Monday night. Yeah. Bring it. We'll bring it back to, uh, we'll bring it back to uh, uh, earlier in the in the day for the next one maybe late uh, late afternoon for professionals what do you think sure awesome katie thanks so much for joining that was uh, uh that was that was fantastic 
yeah. yeah it's it's really awesome i mean i i i'm using it now <laughs> it, it really is a cool device so i'm happy to be using it in part of the part of the process very cool and your feedback guys is just coming in. I'm sure you guys are monitoring this, but everybody's talking about what a great job you guys did. And again, if you're listening, uh, we did not do this for ACVREP this evening. We were kind of gearing this towards professionals a little bit more laid back uh, with uh, conversation style, as you guys sort of heard. Uh, we are doing a, a number of at-home webinars moving through the rest of this week and then into the remainder of the summer. So if you are looking for some credit out there, do check the schedule. Uh, they, we do notify you in the schedule if they are for CEUs. So we apologize uh, if we inconvenienced it all that way, but um, we wanted to keep this a little bit more laid back this evening, so. There was a question about the next device we're gonna be putting out. Yes, we, I'm sure we'll have a webinar on the chameleon as well. Absolutely, yep. Yep, and we'll do more of these on the on the Mantis as well. So we want to focus on iOS this evening. And so we're, I think we're going to queue it up on books, are we not, boys? What is it going to be, the never-ending book fair, Joe? Is that what we're going to call it? That's right. <laughs> <laughs> All right, well, I think it's Miller time. Everybody hey, and I learned a valuable lesson. Water. Do, not hit, do 